Hey folks, this is Eddie Trunk from That Metal Show and Sirius XM Radio and Lifelong Kiss fan. You are listening to the Shout It Out Loud cast with Tom and Zeus. Hey, what's up there, Kiss Army? Tom and Zeus with another episode of Shout It Out Loud cast. Episode 140, Kiss on Fridays. We're recording on <laughs> Wednesday. <laughs> and I think Tom is falling asleep. I'm not falling asleep. I'm rubbing my eyes because we just spent about the last 45 minutes raging against <laughs> every person we know. So that's why we're, we're purging our souls right now for this episode. And wh- wh- what better way to do that than to talk about something elder related with the band, right? Yeah, I guess so, because that frustrates all the Kiss fans. Yeah, this is our way of fucking <laughs> pent up frustration to come out when me and you get together before we uh, hit record and just vent about all the stupid shit we got to deal with. Yeah, because we don't have a lot of time during the week. We usually fire off texts here and there, but when yeah. we log on to record, we're like, oh, uh, let's get on at 630. Okay, it's 725 <laughs> and we're finally recording. Yeah, I know. So that's what happens because we just catch up on everything. It's, uh, you know, it, it, it's busy running three different podcasts. <laughs> Jesus Christ, I know. Yep. And uh, it's a lot of fun, though. Believe it of or not, course, it is a lot of fun. We wouldn't be doing it if it was actual work. Right. Um. So, Tom. Uh, we're back at it. And, uh, what we always do is we look back on last week, which was an incredible episode because the response is through the fucking roof Mm -hmm. and we did revenge. Most definitely. (laughs) Yeah. Look, look, the album reviews are always, always favorites. They're favorites of ours and they're favorites for you guys. And when we do an album like Revenge, oh my God, just crazy interaction and feedback. And that's what it's all about. So we always start with our poll. So of course, album review, it's always favorite song. So we pick our four favorite or the the four that we think would be the best. Uh, So the options were Unholy, Take It Off, Domino, and I Just Wanna. And the interaction with this poll, I think, broke all records from previous album reviews. Uh, But of course, 52% of the voting went to Unholy. And then it was pretty much a three-way tie, give or take a percentage point here or there, between Take It Off, Domino, and I Just Wanna. You had about one or two points separating those three. So they were all kind of fighting for for that the rest there. But Unholy was the clear runaway with 52%. The thing about Uh, this is, Tom, Yeah, I get sometimes we have to cut songs down and we'll be like, okay, maybe this fifth song should be in here instead of these one or two of these last other songs we pick. Mm -hmm. But this could have had like three or four other songs in this list. Yeah, agreed. Mm -hmm. Right. That's what made this difficult. Yeah, because we had a lot of write-ins. We had a lot of people commenting on uh, Heart of Chrome. A lot of people like that one. Uh, then we had a lot of people kind of saying, like, uh, your fellow Grecian here, George yeah. Avagustus. <laughs> uh, I'm laughing at his name. I'm laughing at how he pronounced it. He's, he goes, wow, revenge is called a classic. And then he has, like, the uh, open eyes kind of surprised look. Personal favorite is Heart of Chrome, but I picked Take It Off from this list. Yeah, everybody really loving Unholy. Uh, Gerald Rosenberg. There's no right or wrong answer. Every song is great. This was a staple in my CD player in 93 during my senior year of high school. Yep. True. Not our buddy Nige. I'm usually a Paul guy, but unholy is just too damn good. This is great. Dr. Van Halen, MD, PhD <laughs> says the domino video always cracks me up because it's well known that Gene is a terrible driver. <laughs> How is that well known? <laughs> it's well known for pulling large okay. pieces of furniture out of his ass. Also, I'm, I'm known very, very well for pulling large pieces of furniture from my ass. Oh, God. Asthmatic Cat says, I haven't listened to this album in a long time, but your discourse on it reminded me as to why I loved it so much when it was released. The Gene songs blow away Paul's Thou Shall Not and Paralyzed are so damn good. As you guys said, Ezrin's production make all the songs listenable. Yes, they do. That's true. Pedro Caroz says, my favorite song is God Gave Rock and Roll to You. Wow. But he likes Unholy and Take It Off. Interesting. A lot of people voting in with the Heart of Chrome or Thou Shalt Not. I thought that was uh, pretty interesting, too. 
Kiss Army General says, I like the Paul Stanley bass songs. I could go the rest of my life never hearing another stupid Gene Simmons song. <laughs> <laughs> that is, <laughs> oh man, what the hell? This is great too. Then Uncle Steve's Iron Maiden Zone. I love that. I may have an unpopular opinion, but Unholy destroys the other songs here. I know it's Kiss, but to me, too many of the lyrics on this album were just sexually over the top. <laughs> so I responded to him and said, sexually over the top. This is Kiss, not Iron Maiden, Uncle Steve. Yeah. Come on, it, man. Come on. It wasn't over the top. It was just right on this album. Exactly. Our buddy West Beach says, uh, yeah, Ezrin's production is inspired and arguably Gene's best vocal, referring to Unholy. Yes. Uh, then we'll chime in here with a couple uh, episode-specific comments, which were a ton. Thank you guys for all the retweets and the likes and stuff. Just great stuff. Jason Kennedy, listening to this album all these years later, I can't help but hear them copying the sound of Extreme. Wow. That's <laughs> an, that's. Look, I'm going to be completely honest with you. I am not an extreme aficionado. Maybe our friend uh, Sonny Sharon Pooney can ch chime in on this, but I, I don't hear that. But Jason, uh, thank you for the comment. We'll see what, if people, what they think about that. Uh, then Twisted Kister says, I wonder how long before Sonny Pooney selects Silent Rage for an album review <laughs> after all the mentions have gotten this episode. And then he posts a picture of the Silent Rage album. Cover. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, no, no, Ed, please don't even don't even go near that. King Kusana, wave your panties in the air, baby. Yes. Kiss fan 003, greatest Kiss album ever. Wow. DG from Tennessee says, I will definitely have to revisit this album after hearing the show. A couple of takeaways. This is my Gene and Paul. Not all the political bullshit they tweet nowadays. Also, give me God gave rock and roll to you over rock and roll all night. Whoa. Settle down, DG. Great episode, Tom and Zeus. Uh, then we got some wonderful comments from Sean Geek in the Fast Fret podcast. Uh, we're going to get to that a little bit later in the show, but Sean Geek in the Fast Fret podcast. Uh, big fans of you guys, and thank you for your comments. And again, we're going to get back to you a little bit later in the show. Straight out of MD, saw them at the Capitol Center in Landover, Maryland, just outside D.C. Place may have been 65 70% full. About three or four songs in, in, in the row in front of us was empty then five to six hot chicks came down and sat then a few minutes later they left and bang next thing we know they were on the stage dancing when they did take it off wow Ooh. that's a memory right there holy shit uh king kusano chimes in again when you guys talk about loudcasters being at the strip joints by ourselves i feel attacked there's nothing wrong with looking <laughs> at boobies by yourself it's quite therapeutic no it's not it's 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 not right. There's a, there's a fine line. I get it. You're gonna stop over. You got time to kill before the airport or whatever. You're hitting a, but there's that fine line between like okay to creepy. Exactly to like me and Tom showing up with our buddies and be like, dude, check out that fucking guy in the corner. Look at that guy. That ain't right. Oh wait, that's a that's a guy who listens to our podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's one of our <laughs> listeners. Oh shit, that's King Kusano over there. <laughs> <laughs> all right oh, better yet that's one of our fucking podcast members that's pony over there <laughs> getting escorted out of there by the bartender for touching the girls pony the pole dancer pony the horniest man alive <laughs> better known as sunny bukaki Poonie. And what's even more terrifying is you have to share a room with him on the kiss oh, cruise. Yeah. Oh. Once, once every couple of days, we'll get a text about him saying I sleep naked. No, it's not happening. Nope. That's why that's I'm hoping the cruise gets canceled just for that. <laughs> oh. And then our buddy Murph chimes in Zeus's reference to a dollar 50 in tips at the strip club, a buck 50 you tip in quarters. It wasn't about me, you <laughs> fucking bozo. Ooh, let's go to the strip club. That's exactly why I threw in a Murph comment so oh. I could get Zeus angry at Murph. Oh, he just. And you guys wonder why. Oh, you pick on him. I don't pick on him. He asks for this shit. <laughs> of all the things he heard, he tries to change what I said to make but it sound like I give a dollar fifty. But that's what I he was does. talking about. 
our listeners would do that. I'll be asking the questions. But that's why we love Murph, because he does that. yourself. Oh, get shoved all right. in the fucking locker again. Oh, be nice to him. That's Murph. Fuck. All Murph. right. Go ahead. What do you got on? What do you got on the book of face? Oh, on the book of face. Let's see what we got there. Uh, whoo. A lot of comments. So I'm going to skip around here. Uh, Mark Weiss. I was introduced to kiss between hits and revenge. I remember seeing the unholy video on MTV and it blew my mind. I couldn't wait for revenge to come out. I vividly remember driving to Coop Records and buying that album when it came out. I put the CD in my car and blared it. I was a Kiss fan for life from that point forward. This album holds a special place in my heart and brings back so many memories. I love your review and agree the production on this record is top notch. Bruce is amazing on this album. This is my favorite Kiss lineup. Mm, I wish nice. Kiss would play a song off Revenge on their end of the road tour. Nice job, guys. Thanks, Mark. Nice. Awesome, Mark. Very cool. Yeah. Chad Randall. Revenge is really good for the most part. I can't stand spit. The song is crap. It's so beneath them. <laughs> dude, nothing. Dude, have you heard Bang Bang You? It's not it's, beneath them. There's nothing beneath them. Exactly. It's beneath <laughs> them. Have you heard some of the Gene Simmons vault songs? Oh, who my uncle is a raft. I love no, reference. I, 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 I love you, throwing that in every episode. No, no, no. The, <laughs> the new kiss shouted out loud cast classic, Tom. Mongoloid man. <laughs> oh, is that what, that what it does? <laughs> Uh, anyways, Chad says Vinny Vincent co-wrote a couple songs. He always kicks ass. Great guitar player and songwriter. I love Vinny. Wow. All right. Yeah. Brad Alvery. This album should have gone platinum several times over. One of their best studio albums, writing, producing, musically, very tight. Darren Hunt. I can remember seeing the debut of the unholy video on the Headbangers Ball. I was so fucking happy. I was always a Kiss fan, and I hung in there through the lean years. Asylum, crazy, smashes, hot. When a lot of my friends bailed, I felt so vindicated that Kiss was back. I've always wondered if the director of the video was the same guy who did Pantera's Mouth for War video. The it performance is. parts look similar. Yep, the I believe it the, is. Yep. The day of the album release, I skipped my then girlfriend's grandfather's funeral. <laughs> Not my proudest <laughs> moment to go with my buddies to pick it up. Got really buzzed and listened to it. I can't imagine why our relationship didn't last long. <laughs> I had third row right side of the stage for the Nashville date. Great white opened. They were OK. I just didn't care. I wanted kiss. To this day, in my opinion, the best stage show they have ever had. Great album, great tour, and as always, great episode, guys. P.S. Wave your panties in the air, lick your lips, and shake your hair. Maybe the greatest lyric in history of recorded music. Woo! Oh, love it. That's hey, great. Smoking, Darren. That's awesome, man. You're the best. Awesome. Yep. And by the way, Paul Rackman is the video director's name, and he did stuff for Sepultura, Alice in Chains, Temple of Dog, Pantera. Uh, and I do believe it was the mouthful war video that he did do. So, yeah, he's wow. he's 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 pretty, uh, pretty talented as a video director. He added a P.S. OK, you guys ever noticed that the guitar Paul plays in I just want a video doesn't have any strings on it. <laughs> <laughs> what? I did not notice that. And that's why you guys are the best because you guys noticed that I didn't even pick up on that. Nope. Max Lynch. It's possibly the best non makeup album. Definitely better than anything made after its release. But make no mistake, Eric Singer wasn't all significant to his al of this album's success. Deep down, I know he knows it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Uh, Kevin Jepsen. Uh-oh. A lot of great memories for me when this album came out. You fuckos had me pissing myself uh -oh. over your spit review. <laughs> Unholy is great, but not good live, in my opinion. Paralyzed is a shit song. <laughs> and Tough Love, <laughs> thumbs down. Thou Shall Not is an unbelievable deep track that sounded great on the Kiss Crews when Bruce did it. My wow. top three, take it off. I just want to unholy. 
and looking forward to the Zeppelin Chronicles. Yes, Jepson. Thank you for that. Yep. Good stuff. Jim Romanovich album and band look came out five years too late. What? Five years too late? Hmm. I, mean, I don't know about five. I, I would but say about two. When uh, Guns N' Roses started that's what stripping, I was gonna, yeah. stripping shit down and stuff. Yeah, I would say maybe um, two years too late, not five. Five years would have put it in 87. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Sneed Rock put a picture of Ace with his girlfriend. <laughs> Ace looked like a Muppet. He goes, Ack, is that what he does? Paul <laughs> oh, Stanley. <laughs> Paul Stanley. LP Sternlino says, do you like Unholy? Do you like Kiss? Dude, he's been real active on the Loudcasters group. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's the Sterlino that interacts with us on Twitter. Now he's going nuts on the Loudcasters group, which I love. <laughs> Is that him that put up that photo of the guy that looks like Ace on our website? Yeah, and then on started our- getting into it with the guy. <laughs> It's a picture of a guy that looks like it could be Ace. If you hadn't seen Ace in a few years, except this guy's nose, which is humongous. And I think it's smaller than Ace's. But then it turned into a like, a, oh, you fucking asshole. Oh, I thought it was Ace. <laughs> like, That's not Ace. I know it's not Ace. He wasn't trying. To but that guy does look a little like it. If you don't know what we're talking about, go back and check out the shouted out loudcasters Facebook group and just, just scroll through the feed and look for a picture, a close up of a guy. And forgive me if he's a listener, I don't know who you are, but with, with posing with a guy who looks like zombie ace, like you just, you got to check it out. Oh my God. It's funny over on our loudcasters page. Jason warden takes me back to when I first saw an holy video. I think it was slaughter hosting headbangers ball. I loved it from the first listen, even though I loved eighties kiss. Uh, it was nice to see Uncle Gene back to the demon singing lead, even though I'm a ball guy. This made the band stronger. Listening to your review, it reminded me how much I love this album. Gene shines through. I loved his throwaway tracks on the last few albums. I don't feel he has any on this. I'm like y'all. Wish we had more of this lineup. I guess I've been more accepting nostalgia ever since the reunion ended. Uh, this lineup. I just wish Bruce Kulick was somewhat part of the end of the road tour and these songs would be recognized. Keep up the great work, guys. Thank you, Jason. Great points, buddy. Totally agree with you on that with Bruce and this that lineup. Uh, Joseph Collins says, I walked over to Franklin Village and bought the cassette the day it came out. I, I don't know what Franklin Village is, but uh, also no nothing against bands who opened the tour. However, Pantera and Skid Row were touring together around the same time. That triple bill would have been awesome since both oh. fans were huge Kiss fans. Yep. Yep. Dimebag Daryl. Guy, guy, poor guy. He got buried in a friggin' Kiss coffin. Yeah. God Tom, love him. We're going to go over to YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Craig Broderick. Paul's voice is at its very best on this album. Most definitely. Interesting. Okay. I'm not going to argue with that, but. Pete Staros, man, you guys make me want to listen to each one of your podcasts right up to the very end. Love you guys. Revenge is an amazing album. I still have the CD. P.S. You guys should do a Metallica podcast. Oh, don't even get me going, Pete. I'd love it. Love oh, it, dude. We, I can't I'm, like we would have to do this full time. I Sooner or later, I'm going to have to tell my boss yeah, I'm retiring. <laughs> Why? Did you, do you do you find another job? No, I'm just going to do podcasts for the rest of my life on all my favorite bands. See you later. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, Roz, I just can't listen to Revenge like I used to. Oh. Unholy is always great. I love Bruce's playing on the album, but the rest are just tracks that could have fit on Hot in the Shade. Ooh, I don't like calling things overrated, but damn, this gets a lot of praise, especially when compared to Carnival Souls, which I think holds up far better. Wow. I can't believe the praise you guys have for this album. In the immortal words of Sonny Bukaki Pooty, 
<laughs> brutal. Wow. So you know what though? God, God love that guy in that comic because I, I like when people come in with with hot takes like that. I, I think he's completely and totally wrong. But that that's wow. All right. Hey, you know that's why we're, we're all Kiss fans. We're all different. But wow. Terry the man actually agreed with him. I would definitely put Carnival of Souls up against this any day. Carnival of Souls is heavy as fuck. Yeah, it is, but that doesn't well, I'll save that for when we get to that review. Yeah. Okay. Patton Diorama Tom. Okay. Where can I download the show? Oh. I heard you on Talk is Jericho. Rap All right. Album cat uh clash. All right. Well, any way you can find podcasts, you can find us. So thank you for listening to us on Jericho's show. That's fantastic. Yeah. Podcasts, whatever phone you use or computer. And uh, just search for Shout It Out Loud cast. Love it. Okay. JC, my God, I've been waiting for this one. Thank you so much. Stuart says, this album is way overrated. What a tool. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people say it's overrated. I, I don't get it, but that's okay. I think people focus too much on like some of those deeper tracks that we talked about when they, when they say that it's overrated, but whatever. Yeah. To each their own. Yep. Tom over to you, buddy. All right. Let's, we got a bunch of emails here. I'm going to try to fire off some, uh, some of the, uh, little bit of the different ones here that we got. This one comes from Mr. Eric Schwenk. I have been eagerly awaiting the album review for revenge. Great episode. I was introduced to rock and roll. Thanks to destroyer and love gun and kiss was my favorite band. However, by late eighties, I'd gotten into a lot of other bands and thanks to lukewarm efforts like crazy nights and hot in the shade. I could have easily fallen off the bandwagon, but revenge brought me back and cemented my kiss fandom. Awesome album. All right. Justin Steele. Hey guys was waiting on this episode. Funny. I was thinking the same thing when you first heard unholy, you were like, can this really be my favorite band kiss? I loved putting it on for my friends and seeing their faces when their jaw would drop. This may have been the height of all four guys in every way. That tour was awesome with the Statue of Liberty behind them with the skull face. Saw them at the Meadowlands in New Jersey, October 92. I really wish they had continued in this vein of music style. Keep up the good work. Justin, I'm in the ace cult steel. Awesome. Stephen Wood. Stephen Wood's email is fucking phenomenal. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it would be a whole episode in itself, but I, I want to pray. We love them. Yeah, wow, absolutely. Oh, no, we, we've read the entire thing. It's fucking fantastic. Thank you, Stephen. Gives us his own detailed review of every song. Fantastic. Stephen, you're a fan of the show. We love you taking the time for an email like that. It's great. Uh, Daniel LeBlanc, another great long email talking about listening to Kiss and follow them up through Dynasty. Um, got into them with, uh, love it loud. Didn't get back into anything until forever. Uh, and then got back into them with, uh, with, uh, revenge, you know, an, an extreme close up. That's what happens. Those are the kind of things that people, that, that people say about this album, revenge and extreme close up that kind of pulled people back in. Uh, and then he, then he ends with love your podcast album review crew. And now the Zeppelin Chronicles, regardless of the time it takes to get all those in Daniel LeBlanc. And then our Finnish friend, Yanni Aslak Rasanen. Thanks again for a great episode on revenge. Kiss was huge in Scandinavia in the mid eighties, but by the nineties, the interest in kiss had taken a serious beating due to the disappointing efforts that started rolling in after asylum smashes sounded like hot air. <laughs> when you had fresh releases from bands like Metallica and justice for all guns and roses, appetite for destruction. Like many of us, I more or less gave up on kiss. 90s came around. You had bands like Nirvana and Pearl Jam. Cool new bands paying their respect to Kiss, like Nirvana on that cover album when they did Do You Love Me. Um, Revenge was the long-awaited return to form, and Extreme Close-Up was the icing on the cake for me. Uh, Then he gives some detailed thoughts on the album. Great stuff, Yanni. Uh, Then he says, anyway, that's my two cents. Keep up the good work. All the best to your to all the best to your bowels from Finland. Yanni Aslak, insert your hockey player jokes here. Teppo Newmanen. Yeah, Teppo Newmanen. I, I, I also like to come back to Rayo Rutsalainen. <laughs> you once love in a while. that. I love that. I, so any, anybody that has a last name that starts at one shoulder and goes all the way to the other shoulder is fantastic. Yeah, his uh, son is now on the, the Rangers. Pretty good yeah, player. He yeah. was on the Sabres at the time. But, uh, yeah, we, we have some great hockey uh, names. Tom, we can't go without saying a couple of them, like Yerke Lume. Um, 
Let's go with how about Ta- this time? Tamu e- Salani. Tamu. Oh, he's a classic. How about Essa Tikkanen? Oh, that's a good one. That's a good right? one. How many yeah. cups of that fucking asshole went in? He was an asshole. Now yeah, we're he- talking about Rasmus Ritzelanian and always the king of all Finnish goalies, Boston Bruins own the love child of the Grinch and an elf. <laughs> Tuka, I am the ugliest hockey player of all time. Rask. Well, and then you got then you get the great Saku Koivu. Oh yeah, and his brother. I think it's his brother Miko. Then you get then you got this guy who was such a deep cut on NHL for Sega, Yeri Letnin, when he played for the Dallas oh, Stars. He's oh, not my. a deep cut. He's a fucking uh, sulky winner, I believe. Um, and then you got Mika. Kippersoff in net playing for the Flames. All yep. right, we got to stop. We, 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 we do but this, this is what day. happens. Just let, let me let me end with this one. Yako Rutu. <laughs> I think he's related. Yeah, I think yeah. he's I think he's related to the great Christian, Christian Rutu, Rutu yes. from the Sabres. Yes. yes, yes. See, that's what happens when people from Finland. You haven't watched a hockey game in thirty years. You're spitting out the fucking Finnish name. Everybody loved eighties hockey. Ha- absolutely, absolutely. But anyways, thank you for that email. Uh, we're going to wrap it up with our final comment here from Mr. John Restagno, better known on YouTube as Mr. Antonio 2005, when he says the best kiss podcast, period. Nothing but facts with T and Z mixed with a good sense of humor and some healthy debate. Thanks for the shout out on this latest episode and keep up the great work. Oh, five and John Restano. Mr. Antonio 2005, you are comment of the week. Good answer. Good answer. I like the way you think. I'm going to be watching you. <laughs> and Tom, before we go over to Kiss World, we like to always give a shout out to our family on Patreon. Uh, we always want to tip the cat to them because they help us out so much. Uh, the fans and fa- uh, family members that we think of as family at Patreon, they contribute a lot to the show. And uh, we try to c- provide them with some extra content. There are different levels. If anybody's interested in doing such, you can go on patreon.com, P A T R E O N, or the Patreon app. Or in the episode notes where you see all the links to emails and such, you could always click the link to Patreon and go there and you would search on the creator. So it might be us. It might be an artist. It might be a recording artist. It might be a painter. It might be anything. We're under a podcast. And so if people want to help us out, it's greatly, greatly appreciated. And we love our Patreon family and we can't thank you guys enough. And if anybody's interested, Please take a look and uh, hopefully uh, you'll find something you like and uh, join the fun. Absolutely. Yeah. We can't thank you guys enough. The Patreon family keeps growing. Uh, We appreciate all the time and energy and efforts that you've put in to become part of that family. And like Zeus said, check us out on patreon.com or the app. You can search for us. Uh, We're there. There's multiple tiers. Each tier offers different things. Uh, you can be part of the show with some input. You can get sneak peeks and some previews on some things, uh, some perks, some some merch, some special things. So check us out. The Patreon family continues to grow. And again, we appreciate everybody who has been a part of that family and continues to be part of the family. Thank you so much. So, Tom, what's going on in Kiss World? You making any uh, uh, bunny hops on your 10 speed? Well, I, I have received the proper medication. Uh, like Paul Stanley did. So yeah, the 70 year old like guy, who? Gets Paul Stanley. <laughs> so that's what I'm saying. We're going to need to come up with a Peter Chris eventually. <laughs> Somebody so, will say his name weird and we'll keep, uh, it. we'll figure it out. Yeah. So, so Paul 70 year old guy diagnosed with COVID two weeks away is out two weeks ago is out biking 25 miles and taking selfies of himself. Look, whatever. God love him. God bless him. He, he's either like, like, you know, the $6 million man or what, but he's posting selfies of his, you know, saying, no, oh, I would have never, if I wasn't double vaccinated and had the proper medication and blah, blah, blah. Look, the bottom line is he's back. He's healthy. Looks good. It's just nothing short of a miracle that a 70 year old man with COVID is out biking 25 miles. Like nothing ever happened, but Hey, God love him. Meanwhile, Gene is busy on Twitter, threatening to sue people for making fake 
friggin' bass guitars and arguing with people about you name it. But yeah, our our, our Kiss friends are uh, on Twitter up to their old shenanigans as usual. Yeah, look at the. If you scroll, I'm on my computer as we're go talking, ahead. Tom. Yeah, go if ahead. you go to his site, yeah, and you just. Look at the headshot selfies that he puts on himself. I know. He looks miserable. Oh, yeah. Like, does he not? Does not anybody say to him, Paul, this is not what you would call an attractive photo of you. His face is all fucking like. like it's the crooked man. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's lemon face crooked yeah, man. He's sucking on a lemon, his lemon lips, and he just looks fucking miserable and you know his fucking tiny tim hairdo and you know he, then he puts the worst one up the close-up uh, on him and his and his fucking peewee hermit helmet on biking it's just oh my god he's like kind of back tom pandemic oh. paul's kind of back because the, go ahead i'll tell you right now the worst thing and I mean this in like the best way possible. The worst thing that could have happened was him getting COVID <laughs> because now he's thank God. Thank God he survived it and he's healthy and he's made it through. But now he is like rejuvenated, super friggin' COVID man, you know, and, and, and you would think he would have a smile. Like you just survived a deadly disease at your age. You would think you would have a, a smile, but your crooked faced, citrus fucking smile you can't, you can't even enjoy the fact By the way back. we do a podcast about how much we love this band just yeah. in case you didn't know I, um if yeah, let me tell you if, if if paul if, if we're ever blessed enough to ever get paul on the show we are gonna have to whitewash every <laughs> previous episode on the show oh oh the fucking super fan paul stanley fans we know we all know who they are oh you're so brilliant, Paul. Oh, everybody. And this is the other one. Wish my my son a birth. Dude, why the fuck would you put up that it's your son's birthday and have people wish him a birthday and let everybody know, you know, there's going to be a million other idiots out there that are going to fucking attack you, attack your kid. Like, why would you do that? What's the matter with you, dude? You know, like, why would you ask people to make a comment about your son online? Keep your no. family out of it, Paul. We love you, brother. But that's fucking asking for shit. <laughs> you no one know cares. what I mean? No, no one cares. <laughs> well, it's either that or he's fucking retweeting the guy from fucking Blues Clues. <laughs> 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 fucking rock and roll is that? <laughs> Blues Clues. <laughs> he writes, um, love this. Touches my heart to see Steve, as though he knows him, <laughs> address the past and rekindle this friendship. That so many of us were part of. Dude, what fucking friendship? When this motherfucker was on, you were like 40 years old. Why are you watching? You didn't have any kids then. Because the video got 1.5 million views. So Paul has to be a part of it. Exactly. That's it. He did not watch this. He didn't have kids at the time. But he has to. Oh, what's trending online? Let me attach my name to something that people feel is heartwarming. It's the same thing when he comments about who doesn't love Metallica. You, because you haven't <laughs> talked about him in 35 years. <laughs> Why are we watching Blue's Clues 25 years ago? The fuck is wrong with you? Oh. What are you talking about? That what he just, does? Oh, my God. Blue's Clues riding his bike. Ah. Uh, now, new, listen, new, new listeners, we love Kiss, by the way. So. Yeah, sure we do. You know who doesn't love Kiss these days is a lot of people that bought the new the New Year's Eve Dubai episode thing on DVD. Thanks for the money. <laughs> why is this being delayed? Why don't we just give them the DVD? Because fuck them. Oh, that's why. That's why. <laughs> you know, a lot of people ask why. Why treat the customer this way? Why? Because fuck them. That's why. They're Kiss fans. We need to show them who's boss. Dude, it's been nine months since that thing. And all they keep saying is, it's delayed. The distributors, the manufacturers. <laughs> Gene is like, fuck them. We'll wait until New Year's 2021. <laughs> even to the point where even Sonny's pointing out 
the, some fucking like the biggest kiss fucking lovers of all time are bitching now yep. about their DVDs. Yep. Right. Then no. he was, he's losing them. Yeah, it's true. Now, look, all, all jokes aside, I, I I did not order any of the New Year's Eve stuff. I didn't get any of it, but I, I will say this. It's September and you keep sending out these delay. Come on, dude, to, to, to take a recorded concert and put it on DVD. Well, you got to match it up. Oh, 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 here we go. Right. That's send what I'm comments. Thinking. That's the only reason. Send your comments to Zeus. <laughs> you got to match it up. Match what up? Say it out loud. Come on. I don't know. <laughs> I know. But, I know. No, but, but what but, else could it be? Here it is. It, there it is. It doesn't take that long to burn DVDs to make all this uh, nine months for a show that was already live and recorded. Just fucking press it on. They get a whitewash anything in the background footage that showed somebody without a mask in the background. Maybe remember because they, like oh because like I want to fucking pay extra and wait eight months to see some fucking fat guy in the background. But there was no background. There was nobody there. Remember, Remember? they had the freaking like, how did we prepare for this show? Oh, that like, oh, all that yeah, shit, oh, but oh, the extra oh, footage oh, and the stuff behind this. Yeah, the behind. The yeah, scene. that's yeah, what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah. Like, maybe okay. they're like, oh, we can't have that guy. The guy in the back jerking off in the back. He doesn't have a mask on. <laughs> Edit him out. Right? It'll come to you when we do Dubai 2.0 in 2021. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, other than that, uh, I don't know if the Kiss Cruise is happening still. We're waiting and seeing. So far, it hasn't been canceled. Uh, Cruise Fest was canceled, and I don't Correct. know if we got to it last time to talk about it, but yeah, yep. Cruise Fest was canceled, unfortunately. Yep. And uh, that's too bad. So yep. I don't know. The tour is also supposed to start, well, today's Wednesday. Tomorrow, I believe, Tom. Yep, it's either tomorrow or Friday that the, the, the tour is back on. Kiss posted something on their social media saying that the, the doctors advised them and it's safely to go. And, and and again, look, I know we don't want to turn this into a whole COVID thing, but I'm, you know, when people say things, you got to kind of call them on it. And not long ago, Gene said, if one of us gets infected with COVID, that's the end of the tour. Well, two of you got infected with COVID and now you're right back at it. You're right back at it you're rescheduling dates you're going back on tour you're pushing tour dates out look everybody's got their own opinion on what's going on right now with covid and vaccines we're not going to spend too much time on that but i I don't understand what the band is doing i'm happy for kiss fans i'm happy for us that we already got to see them once but when gene comes out and makes statements like that and bangs the drum about covid constantly on twitter and just says oh yeah the tour's back on okay all right and and you know Kudos to Neil and Joe who put on Cruise Fest. They took the cautious approach and they didn't want people to to show up in Miami for a few days and potentially get sick and then get a positive test and not be allowed on the cruise ship for Kiss Cruise. So they canceled that. Um, they did a Facebook Live. We shared that on our social media. Uh, but like Zeus says, it's September 8th right now, and it appears the Kiss Cruise is on I'm not going to say I'm excited about that, but I'm not going to say I'm disappointed. I'm kind of on the fence about how I feel about that, but let's see what happens. If they don't cancel it within the next week or two, then it's got to be on because they can't drop that at the last minute, in my opinion. Yeah, well, we'll find out soon enough. Yep. So, Tom, it's TV appearance time. Yes, it is. All right. Yeah. So we are doing Kiss on Fridays. Yeah. Now you want to tell people a little bit about Fridays. Yeah. Those who don't know. So Fridays was a sketch comedy show uh, in the vein of Saturday Night Live. Okay. Uh, It was on Friday nights, obviously. And it was it was on ABC as opposed to Saturday Night Live that had uh, was done with NBC. Uh, And it aired uh, from 1980 to 1982. And it had three seasons. It's most famous for launching the careers of people like Michael Richards of Seinfeld, Larry David, creator of Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm. Uh, and it was the similar thing. It had, you know, it had sketches and comedies and it had guests. It had musical guests, et cetera. So it was the same thing. And again, it was a direct competitor to Saturday Night Live. Well, and, and one of the musical guests that they had was Kiss. And that was in January of 1982. And it was during the elder time. And it was pretty much the only 
organized videoed recording of them in their elder costumes playing songs from the elder because they didn't tour for the album. Um, it's a pretty well-known clip. It's on Kissology. YouTube has it as well. Um, and I think diehards, regardless of how you feel about the elder and the songs that are on it, it's kind of a, maybe I'm, I'm going to speak on my behalf for me. I, it's kind of a beloved clip because it is so unique and it is so rare. And it's pretty much the only time you see them in these costumes performing live. And we'll talk about that. Uh, songs from the elder. Yeah. Uh, Fridays. I think of Fridays uh, for me in pop culture. I think of the whole Andy Kaufman episode where he, yep. he pretends like that. He's getting to a fight with cast maids yep. and, throws water on them and a big fight and stuff. And then also they've had, you know, they had kind of some legendary bands on there. They, they had did. our buddy, uh, uh, West beach and the plasmatics on, but they also had the TV us debut of AC DC. Imagine uh, that. Yep. Yeah. They had, you know, they were about three years and then, uh, I think it was nightline went to like go five days a week. So they booted it out, try to make it go at night. It just didn't work. And unfortunately, now, it got canceled. Now, Zeus, who is the host of Nightline? This is Ted Koppel. And tonight, we're asking Paul Stanley. Have you ever seen him? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Fraley, we need you to answer this question. Is that what he does? There's also a breaking news story, uh, Mr. Koppel, about a shooting. Breaking news. Buckwheat has been shot. I love that. You that love just, that. that. That's just so. I can't get over that. That's just so <laughs> fucking ridiculous. I repeat. Buckwheat <laughs> has been shot. <laughs> you know, oh, God. That All right. So legendary. We oh, love that. So shit. good. So good. Yeah. <sighs> One second, one second. Um, what? what <laughs> how am I going to transition to that? I don't know. <laughs> All right, go ahead. Um, so what you have here is it's just performance. Kiss isn't, you know, in skits or anything like that. It's three songs they perform, all from the elder. It wasn't them doing, uh, you know. Rock and Roll All Night, Detroit Rock City, and one song. They were in The Elder. That's it. The costumes were probably like, what the fuck? Who is the What? And then there's Eric Carr. So it is a TV appearance. So if you were still in Kiss, which most people were not at this point. Remember, no one really seen Kiss or anything about them since Unmasked. Right. You know, Eric played the <clears throat> Palladium, but there's no internet and shit like that. There was rumors that Peter Chris left, but the band isn't popular anymore. They supposedly have a new drummer. So if you're into them and you see them perform and you really haven't seen them since kind of dynasty unmasked, you're like, what the fuck is this? What are these outfits? Who's that guy back there? What's going on here? Very different, very different. And these are not lip sync performances. These are live performances. So we're going to play the whole performance for you guys. And then we'll break it down afterwards. Listen to how fucking great this is and unique. This is the kind of shit I live for. I don't want, oh, you can get the concert from fucking 75. Great. You mean another fucking version of a live? Oh, you can get the concert I have of. You know, them in 85. Oh, so you mean like uncensored, animalized? Oh, you can get fucking this when they had in 2009 in the reunion, whatever. I don't like every that shit I have. These are new songs that you do not have live performance clips of. This is what I live for. Exactly. Absolutely. And that's the thing that I love about this. The fact that it's not lip sync, like most of these performance artists do. Some of them are live. I shouldn't say most, but the fact that this is completely live, it sounds fucking amazing. Vocally, musically, Ace is here. They, they sound terrific. They play the oath, World Without Heroes, and I. 
So if you don't know anything about the elder, you're going to be like, fuck, this album rips. World Without Heroes is a ballad. But the oath and I, regardless lyrically what you think, the songs rip musically and it comes through on that. And we're going to play the audio of it. But if you haven't seen this, we urge you. It's on Kissology and it's on YouTube, the entire 12 and a half or 13 minute clip. You have to just watch it visually, not just hear it. So we're going to drop the, the audio in here and then we're going to come back and talk about it. Without further ado, here is Kiss on Fridays. Okay, let's watch Ralph and Millie's favorite band, Kiss.
So, Tom, what do you think? All right. So first off, let's start like visually real quick. So it, the first thing that strikes me is, holy shit, look how far they have fallen. <laughs> in ter- in ter- and I mean that in terms of the stage looks like something that like a high school play would build. It was built with like two by fours and like plywood. And this is the band that like had like the Alive 2 stage set like five years ago. So you look at how far they have fallen. But then as a Kiss fan, I look on the bright side. I'm like, fuck, yeah, but look at where they are now. They're still touring and they're still selling out arenas, you know, or venues. So I looked at that transition and what a phase in their career it was in 1982 when they were doing this. They did a show called Fridays that was semi-popular for a short period of time, performing songs off the elder, which no one bought. They didn't tour the album, um, but they looked fucking unbelievable and sounded fan fucking tastic. I mean, Eric Carr was on fire. Ace looked kind of half asleep, but played fucking great. Gene and Paul looked and sounded fantastic. So those are those are some of my general thoughts. What are some of your general thoughts? Then we can kind of break down the songs if you want to do that, too. Yeah, I don't give a fuck if uh, it's Ralph and Millie's favorite band. I don't know who the fuck they are, um, but that's what they announced. It's Kiss. Yep. Smoke. And then you hear the rip out. We know this. We do a Kiss podcast. We know this. We know the oath. It just fucking rips. Imagine just being like, oh, yeah, Kiss. What happened to them? They've been kind of out of it. Yep. Well, you know, and you're thinking of Beth and you're thinking of I was made for loving you. And all of a sudden they open up with the, the fucking oath. You're like, is this Iron Maiden? What is this shit? Yep. Holy fuck. Paul's voice. He does this. He can hit like that. There's that falsetto that's throughout the song. I uh, And that's one of the things I always thought, like, he can't do the oath because he can't do that. But he did it. Yep. He did it. It yep. sounded great. Yeah, it, it was it was fantastic. They they the the play the band the tightness of the band playing like you said when they kick off with that riff of the oath which I don't give a shit again what you say about the lyrics or the falsetto the song rips Eric is killing it but Paul's vocals hitting those notes and again it's 1982 the album just came out of course he can he can do it then obviously we don't expect him to do that now but they they sounded so tight but. Before we start breaking down the, the songs and the music first, let's let's pause a little bit and talk about the costumes because you don't get to see these other than photos. You don't really get to see live performance footage of them in the elder costumes. They're unbelievably unique. OK, I I'm a Gene guy. I think Gene looks fucking unbelievable i don't like really like the short like bob hairstyle thing that looks like his modern hairdo now yeah yeah but i like kind of like that armor like the knight kind of looking shit okay ace looks ridiculous it looks like he has kiss underoos on (laughs) with fucking those those boots i used to wear when i was six years old when it would snow out and i'd go sledding he looks like he's wearing those he looks ridiculous Mm -hmm. eric looks awesome i think his costume's kind of cool then paul Paul looks like a cross between the girl from Flashdance and like some old Italian like lady with with the earrings in the purple headband, the high heel boots, the fucking the pirate shirt from Seinfeld or whatever the fuck he's wearing. Horrible. The short little haircut. Horrible. He looks ridiculous. Looks ridiculous. OK, I know generally speaking, the, a lot of people don't like these costumes. They're unique and they're very eye catching. It doesn't make them good. But I think Eric and Gene look great. Ace is like, ah, Paul looks, ah. But yeah, Paul looks ridiculous. The, the high heeled boots that Gene and Paul are wearing. I don't understand that look at all. It's really, it's really bad. Um, the only other thing I would add again is Paul, Paul's purple headband. Oh yeah. Gene's flicking his tongue throughout the song. Ace is grooving. Gene's got really the planet of the apes hairdo going. Yeah. Oh, totally. And That's a good way to a, look at it. The big time Gene leg kick that he does on um, uh, Love Him, Leave Him. Yep. Does that big leg. And he does the gyrating where he's like fucking his base. The hip thrust shit. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, the other aspect musically, Ace's solo is fucking hot as hell. Yes. Blazing. Fucking great solo. I have that written um, down too. Yep. The crowd looks dead I, or they look like, what the fuck is this? This isn't the kiss that we heard of Paul with the jazz size and 
outfit that he's got on and the falsetto. And then Ace, even the outro kicks ass. Um, Paul's doing a little bit of the fucking Hulk Hogan ear thing. Uh, the Hulk, I know. Every, yes. I noticed <laughs> that. people over here putting his ear uh, hand up to his ear. Uh, I think the Hulk still was probably out back by then. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. I noticed that too. And I noticed what you said too, about the crowd. Cause there's a couple of, cam- there's a couple of camera shots that have the angle from behind Paul over his shoulder, looking out into the crowd. And it's a combination of what the fuck is this? And <laughs> Like, why? Uh, what is happening? Why am I here? Like, nobody, when the songs ended, like, when, when the oath ended, you had a couple people with, like, some homemade kiss signs and some people really hooting and hollering. But while the show, while the performance is going on, it's kind of, like, just, like, shock and awe. And, again, you said it at the beginning of the episode. It's 1982. People are like, wait, kiss is still a thing? What is happening right now? Yeah, I did, for my own personal amusement, Tom, uh, I would try to find people in the crowd. I do the same thing. Go ahead. Who'd you find? I, I found Jim Morrison back from no. the dead from the seventies in that crowd. Uh, he's in that one. And then I found some other ones on the other uh, ends of the other songs as well. But well, yeah, I mean, the song itself, you got a live version of the band that put out. I at the exact time they did it. Yep. It's fucking incredible. It's a yep. great find. I, I myself love it. It's not the 15,000th version of them doing Love Gun. It's the oath. And they're performing it live on TV. It's fucking awesome. And speaking of the crowd, there is, uh, I, I think it's been confirmed. I think it started off as like an urban legend. And people like, no, 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 that's true. Blackie Lawless from Wasp was in attendance at this. I don't know if he was actually sitting in the crowd or if he was backstage, but Blackie Lawless was rumored to be here. And I guess it's been confirmed in a couple of kiss books that he was at this, at this taping. I don't know why. I mean, I know Blackie's a kiss fan, but I just thought that was kind of an interesting factoid for this performance. But, uh, but yeah, no, the oath, I mean, as a kiss fan, that's why I think these, this footage is so beloved and I'm really happy that they put it on kissology um, because I don't recall seeing ever seeing it before. I don't recall seeing this on exposed or extreme close up, maybe clips of it, but seeing the full 12 minute three song performance um, was was awesome. And having it on Kissology and, of course, available on YouTube. Yeah. So uh, so they they wrap up the old. They kind of have like a little TV break because, you know, then the clip comes back and they go into, as you heard, a world without heroes, which I have always liked this song. I take it for what it is. You know, it's a Kiss song. It's on The Elder. They had a video for it. It's a ballad. For me, I think Gene really sounds good vocally. Whether or not you like the song or not, they dim the lights. There's a smoke machine. There's clouds. It's It actually looks and sounds really cool, even if you're not a fan of the song, which, Zeus, I know you're not a fan of the song. Ooh, don't say that. Okay. So, World Without Heroes. Red light comes on. There's a close-up of Gene singing. I put the same thing, Tom. Smoke machine. Gene's singing this very well. Yeah. But the song sucks. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. It's a horrible song. Okay. And and again, it's not something like, oh, my God, turn this off. It's hurting my ears. It's it's just not a good song. It's horrible. Is Is it worse than Shandy? No. Oh, no. Oh, okay. No. Shandy's got that stupid jingle. Ding, 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 like thing in the beginning going you like you when they play that on the cruise you're going to be singing every word to it i sure know it um the one big thing about this paul does the solo yes he does and he friggin' kills it because I, I like this solo in this song and he, he that was interesting you don't see a lot of paul solos and he he, he kills it why why does he kill it or why no, does he do why is he doing it i don't know what is that guy over there you know the guy over there the guy who's no idea where he's at right now. He's who, walking the, who, around the stage. Who the guy in his lightning bolt feety pajamas with the electric guitar? Yeah, that That's, guy. That guy. Why isn't he doing the solo on this? I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, it, it. But Paul, Paul does n- the solo on it. Right. Right. Is that what he does? Oh, is that what he, th- he does? A solo? Is that what he does? Is that what he does? Sounds great. I'll tell you another thing I noticed, too. You talked about the beginning of the song, how it has that the red light, the close up of Gene. I'm obsessed with Gene's makeup. His makeup has looks absolutely fucking pristine and perfect. Then like it by looks, the end, he looks sweaty. Oh, he's a mess he by the, the end. 
the but, white spots. But right out. then and there, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm like obsessed with the lines on his makeup. It looks freaking awesome. But yeah, I, again, I don't mind. I don't mind that song. I don't mind that song. It, it's, it's a live it's, performance of it. Exactly. I will take something like that. Correct. Any day. Yep. Over. OK, this one's 100,000 years. Okay. Oh, pew. Yeah. Oh. And then Ooh. this crowd, there's Tom Hanks for a little bit. <laughs> And at one point at the end, Davy Lopes slash <laughs> Jackie Gutierrez is in the clip. <laughs> See, it's a ch- you guys are all challenged to pick these people out in the video. Yeah. Okay. Jackie Gutierrez and Davy Lopes look alike. I used to love Jackie Gutierrez. Short sock, Boston Red Sox. Absolutely. Yeah, Tom. I You know, they move on to the third track, which mm-hmm. is I. But now Paul has his shirt off <laughs> because it's time to party when you play I. Dun, 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 dun. Ooh. Not only okay, when you combine a shirtless Paul with a purple headband, short hair Paul doing flash dance, Olivia Newton John, let's get physical dance moves. It's jazz size. It's fucking horrific. It's just not good. It's jazzercise. He's doing yeah. the headband yeah. and everything. It's not headband. good. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Um, Paul's got his shirt off. I don't know why, but the, it's so badass listening to them go live back and forth. Each one of them. Good God. Why didn't they do that more? And they're fucking on all the, in all their albums, all the performances. Why didn't they have more split vocals? I don't, mm-hmm. I'll never understand that, but I go agree. ahead. I agree. No, I was going to say, and speaking of split vocals, go back into our previous episode catalog. We did an episode on our favorite dual vocal yes, songs with, with Paul and Gene. So, because we're a huge I, fan of that. I think we that we'd... one's called Together as One, maybe. I'm not uh, sure. Could have been. Yep. Yeah. I think it might have been. Well, what I liked about this one, Tom, is if you notice, Ace is in the middle of them. Yeah. But when the chorus is on, you got all three, and you can see how much work Eric is putting in the back and vocals in the choruses. You mm-hmm. can see the work he's got in. You got the other two in the front doing it. And then Ace is in the middle with his guitar held up in the air, kind of playing sideways. It, it looks awesome. It's a yeah. fucking great visual. Yep. And it's it's interesting, too, because one of the things that pisses me off is during that funny part when Paul's doing his little Elvis, you know, I don't need no, no money. They, that, the, the camera's on Gene. Yeah, you don't see him. You don't see Paul. I wanted to see if he was doing some hip shaking or shoulder yeah. shaking like during the whole no money. Yes, he didn't do that. Fame. And then there's a clip where I, I know that historically, like Gene and Ace always do that weird thing. And Gene does it with Tommy now where he like kind of gets close to him and like and flicks, flicks his, his tongue. There's a there's a thing. If you look at it quickly, it literally looks like Gene and Paul kiss. <laughs> Like, it's very weird. Then the angle of the camera, you can't tell what's going on. I'm like, what is happening here? Old Stanley. Ever see him make out with <laughs> Gene Simmons? Ow. Ow. Is that what he does? <laughs> um, yeah. They, and they also changed the lyrics a little bit. Oh, yep. Go ahead. Uh, the guts to stand on my own, not the balls. That could mm-hmm. change. And at the end, they did as much as they could a kiss show, a little confetti, a little fire, and a little explosion. Not much, but enough there. Some kids actually look like they got excited by this point now. Now, some in the crowd are actually fucking jumping up and down at the end of the song. Yes, you're right. At the end, there were a bunch of kids really fired up, like some kiss signs held up. So I, I don't know. I'm wondering if. And again, maybe I'm giving the crowd too much credit for being like a you know controlled or maybe they maybe maybe the network said okay during the performance everybody's got to kind of chill and and remain seated if you want to hoot and holler at the end because everybody is like totally dead during the performance and when it's over then they get up and they're waving and, and pounding their fists and waving their signs maybe kiss one them over it's new songs I don't know this shit maybe and by the end they're like fuck yeah this is our maybe. band is cool. Maybe. And then you can see a, a quick glimpse of Freddie, um, Freddie Prince from Chico and the Man at the end of this one. It's a fucking great show, by the way. <laughs> Chico and the Man. Yeah, he was at, he was in the audience at one point, yep. even though yep. he might be dead by this point. I don't know. Oh, that could be true. That could be true. But I thought, OK, taking the totality of this. This is fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. It really um, is. 
listen to the performances, guys. Play it back again. Find it. Uh, this shit is awesome. Three live performances from the actual band that performed these actual songs. So what I mean by that is meaning it's not fucking uh, makeup or on the cruise, not uh, or the Kiss Cruise performing this. This is the band that did it. Eric Carr back there, Ace Ace Frehley, <laughs> and uh, and our and our local heroes Paul and Gene performing this as they just recorded it within the year. I mean, this episode came out January fifteenth, eighty two. The album came out in November. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you're right, and I think that's what I think that's what adds for me. And I know if you're listening to the show, you're a Kiss junkie like us. That's what adds to the kind of like the, the excitement and the enjoyment of this is the rarity of it all. The, 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 the live, not lip synced performance. The first time really seeing these costumes, not just pictures, but the costumes in action. You know, a, a small confined space where the cameras can really get up close with each member. And you can, there's a camera behind Eric. You can see him sitting in the drum kit right up close with the three other guys on the stage playing the guitars and singing and doing the solos regular live concerts. You don't get that kind of close up stuff that often because it's such a big venue or a big stage. This year, it's a small TV stage you're seeing there. And again, regardless of what you think of the elder, and I know there's a lot of people out there that hate it and don't want to listen to any of the songs and probably think all three of these songs suck, but it is a unique performance. And I think it's a memorable performance. And as a kiss fan, I think it's something special. And and that's why I think I that's why I enjoy it. And you're listening to us right now. I we, we I know you've seen the video, but maybe it's been a while since you have. Go back and watch it and tell me that even if you don't like these songs, that you're just not finding yourself enjoying what you're seeing because it really is a very cool clip. Now, what's funny is, so somebody seeing this must be like, "What the fuck? This is." awesome we gotta get this oh my god i gotta get this new album exactly and imagine if they play well i know they changed it when it came out they started with the oath but imagine if they get it and they play and they hear what to open up the album (laughs) and then just a boy and then odyssey they must be like what the fuck did i watch and what is this i was gonna say you took that out of right out of my mouth great great point you're playing these songs. You got a you got a nice soft ballad. Then you got two rockers with guitars and drums, and just everybody kicking ass. And people are like, oh fuck the L. Oh, I'm gonna grab this. Like, wait, what? What is this trash right now? You know what I mean? But I'll tell you one thing that I like about this performance. And you you know, obviously, you could tell that I'm gushing over it. Mm-hmm. They had it. They still had a shit ton of energy. They oh, were yeah, they, they were trying to win that crowd over. They were playing like they were still enthusiastic. They weren't up there being like, oh God, this album sucks. No one cares about Kiss anymore. We're not touring. We can't, you know, we're on Fridays, some show that not even, you know, we're not even on Saturday Night Live. We're on fucking Fridays instead. They were playing like they gave a shit. They cared about this performance they and they took it serious. Yeah, they took they it seriously. To win people over. Yep. Absolutely. Agreed. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what we normally do, Tom, is we start breaking this stuff down and ranking them. Okay, let's do it. So this is considered a TV appearance. Mm-hmm. Tom, we have done TV appearances, seven previous ones. Yep. ABC in concert, Mike Douglas show, Paul Lynn Halloween special, Land of Hype and Glory, Gene and Ace on the Don Lane show. MTV Kiss Unmasking, Paul and Gene on Oprah. Okay, do you have your uh, ranking? Yep, so I got my rankings right here. So right now I have number one, ABC in Concert. Number two, Land of Hype and Glory. Number three, The Mike Douglas Show. Number four, Paul in Halloween Special. Five is the MTV Kiss Unmasking. Six is Paul and Gene on Oprah. And seven is Gene and Ace on The Dawn Lane show this is a tough one for me because it's live it's the elder it's something unique it's not lip synced um as much as everybody knows i love love gun in the alive two era and that's why i have land and land of hype and glory rank number two 
Uh, I'm actually going to bump that down. I'm actually going to I'm, I'm put this Friday's episode. I'm going to put this at number two behind AB, behind ABC in concert. ABC in concert was great because it was the band 1974 raw playing firehouse, just looking insane. But this is the elder. It's unique. It's rare. It's live. It's Eric Carr. And I like the songs from the elder. So I'm putting this at number two for me behind ABC in concert. Wow, Tom. Yep. Wow. That, that's I just, it. So for me, Tom, uh, I rank these Mike Douglas show, Paul Lynn Halloween special, ABC in concert, MTV Kiss Unmasked, Land of Hype and Glory, Gene and Ace on the Don Lane show, and Paul and Gene on Oprah last. Oh, uh, I'm not sure about this. Okay. I can tell you that for nostalgia purposes, I have Mike Douglas first, and then I have Paul Lynn second. Mm -hmm. I've got to decide if I put it above ABC in concert or not. Now, ABC in concert had what songs? Nothing to lose, Firehouse and Black Diamond, and it was all live. Okay, Nothing to Lose and Firehouse and Black Diamond, three of my favorite fucking songs. Mm Mm-hmm. Ever by yep. Kiss, and they performed all three of them, and they were raw and hungry. Um, that's why it's number one for me on the rankings, just because of that. Ooh, I'm gonna drop drop this in underneath it. I, I was thinking about going, but I, you know, I just don't very like um, the song um, "World Without Heroes." Okay, and those other songs are three of my favorite. But the oath and I in a live performance like that. Oh, yep. I mean, that's how much I love ABC in concert and the other two to put this underneath because I think it's right there. So I'm going to put this at number four for me. OK, uh, right underneath ABC in concert and above MTV kiss unmasking. OK, it's it's hard not to rank this high. I mean, you're talking about like we keep saying a live non link non-lip sync performance, unique costumes, unique songs. Yeah. You know, you know, if you if you if you're a Kiss fan and you don't have this ranked near the top of of our TV performances, then you really just hate The Elder. And that's fine. That's your right. I know a lot of people hate it. Uh but for me, I look at it as more than just the content yeah. of The Elder. I look at it as a whole and it's just a really really exciting clip for me. But that's the thing, Tom. That's why I'm always like when I hear about bootlegs and things like that, I don't want to hear the same fucking set list all I the times. You. I like 79, 78 and above yep. to about 82. Stuff I, in yep. there if you can Cause find. Because it, it's rare and hard to find stuff. I got, yeah. Exactly. Stuff they don't perform a lot of. Yep. You know? You're, you're right. Um, so we hope you guys like this episode uh, and, uh, you know, look forward to the next TV appearance. But, Tom, what we usually do is this. Hi, this is Ed Spanjberg of ClickTShop.com. And for all your shouted out loud cast gear and merchandise, please visit ClickTShop.com. At Click T Shop, you can find lots of Kiss inspired t shirt designs, plus mugs, hats, hoodies, pillows, and all new fine art selections. And now, here's your question of the week. Okay, question of the week. So this comes from Danny on Facebook, and he even kind of acknowledges it, and so do I. This potentially could be an episode. So it's a quick question, and he acknowledges that. And the question is this. He says, I know you guys sometimes talk about overrated albums. Sometimes Tom, a little bit more specifically, mentioning Destroyer and Creatures of the Night is considered overrated. Quickly give me what you think is an underrated kiss album whoa yeah underrated underrated um, i mean like me and you obviously both have uh hot in the shade for uh, i mean we could go by errors hot in the shade is underrated for the non-makeup mm-hmm. i think this it's got a lot of great songs it's a couple clunkers in there but the yep. songs on there that they never play or you never hear anybody talk about are fucking awesome. You love yep. me to hate you. Uh, King of hearts. 
uh, what's the other one there? There was Silver Sil- Spoon. Silver Spoon. Yeah, yep. those three are just such great songs. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, that's one. I would also say, overall, we uh, it was a flashback episode Wednesday when I always repost a previous episode, and I put up Paul Stanley's. The feedback we got today on that album again, amazing, was incredible. Yep, and I think of all the albums, if you put up those Kiss albums. The immediately you say, what's the best Kiss album? There are, you know, you're going to get the usual. Um, you're going to get Love Gun. You're going to get uh, Destroyer, Rock and Roll Over. Uh, you might get Dress to Kill. You might get the debut. You might get Creatures. You might get Revenge. Never does somebody say Paul Stanley's solo album. Agre- yeah, good point. good point. So that to me, no one really puts that up there. I mm-hmm. would say that's underrated. Okay, great answers. I was going to agree with you on Hot in the Shade. I'm going to throw one out here. I'm going to say, for me, underrated, I'm going to say Crazy Nights. I'm going to tell you why. Because people think of Crazy Nights, they think of the the title track, they think of Paul's high vocals on songs like I'll Fight Hell to Hold You in My Way. But to me, that album is underrated strictly because of the Gene songs that we always talk about. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, Good Girl Gone Bad, Hell or High Water, Thief in the Night. Oh, great. I mean, you know, and even Turn on the Night. Mm-hmm. When you when you shift away from the hits like Crazy Nights and Reason to Live and go into the really deep tracks on Crazy Nights, yeah, it's 87. It's a keyboard album. It was their, you know, their Bon Jovi attempt at, you know, that kind of stuff. But I think I think that is an underrated album. You people love Asylum. People hold that album close to them, even though there's a ton, there's a ton of underrated songs on that too. Most of them Gene again. But I think Crazy Nights is an album that kind of gets thrown in the middle because it's like, oh, yeah, keyboards, you know, the title track and Reason to Live. There's a ton of great stuff on there that, that doesn't get enough people talking. And I'm going to throw Crazy Nights on there as, as underrated. But I agree with you. Paul Stanley's a great call. I agree. Yeah. People like Paul Stanley, but it never really gets talked about in the upper echelon in their overall catalog that it should. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good stuff. Good stuff. Great question. Great question. Thank you, as always. Tom, where can people find us? All right. So uh, our email, we say this every week, uh, shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Please send us your emails. We get a lot of them and we read them all. We try to do our best to get to a couple during each each show here, uh, but we appreciate the feedback and we believe me, we do not ignore any of your emails. So please send us feedback, comments, whatever you want. We're going to take a look at them and Zeus and I always read them and talk amongst each other about them. And sometimes we read them on the air. And then, of course, our social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, reach out, tag us, comment, interact. You can send us DMs on all those platforms as well. Uh, And, of course, we're part of the great Pantheon podcast network of shows. Tons of great shows on there. We got a lot of our friends on there. Our buddy Jay from the Hook Rocks. Tons of great shows. And, of course, Jay is uh, joining us on our journey with Zeppelin and the Zeppelin Chronicles. We just dropped the intro episode. And uh, keep your eyes open for more of those coming in the future. Uh, so he's our friend and Pantheon partner. And of course, as Zeus mentioned earlier in the show, Patreon, our wonderful Patreon family. Check us out there on the website or the app. See if you want to become part of that family. And our good friend, Ed, uh, question of the week. Click T Shop is a shop. Click with a K. Click T Shop.com. Check him out. Yeah. Uh, I always uh, tell people they can always DM us on Facebook, Instagram. And also on Twitter, we actually are a place that people, we welcome them. So we don't tell you to fuck off when you write to us. Never. We actually welcome them. Mm-hmm. So uh, please subscribe and like our YouTube, YouTube. channel. <laughs> um, that has grown tremendously and we love it. So we appreciate everybody that watches on YouTube. Uh, give us one of those five star, star child reviews on Apple iTunes. That's a big help to us. And even on Pod Chaser, I think, uh, Tom, you have something from Pod Chaser. We got one recently. We do. And as I referenced earlier at the beginning of the show during feedback, our buddy Sean Geek, he has a podcast and he did an episode review uh, on our hundredth episode with Bruce Kulik and Chris Jericho, the draft. Uh, five stars. And he writes, 
The deeper I dive into this show, it becomes apparent that these are Kiss fans, but not toxic. Yeah, there is a lot of ribbing, but at the end of the day, that friendship between Tom and Zeus is just beautiful. Oh, I couldn't agree more. And hear <laughs> this, Bruce Kulik, the secret weapon of Kiss, the nicest guy, and I know because I met him in rock, and my favorite Kiss guitarist and Chris Jericho from my own backyard in Winnipeg are on Ooh. this episode. It is a dream come true. Thank you all for doing this. I thought I couldn't love the show more. And then I discovered this episode. Sean Geek Podcast. Thank you. We love when people jump on board and hear the show and then go back and discover some great episodes from the catalog, such as the wonderful and unbelievable 100th episode with Bruce Kulik and Jericho doing the Bruce Kulik draft. So Sean Geek podcast thank you for that feedback and for that five-star review on pod chase we appreciate it thank you very much buddy yeah it's greatly appreciated and this is the part of stuff that we talk about unfortunately we have a good problem that is we get too much feedback but a lot of the feedback is stuff like you guys brought up hey did you guys notice that paul doesn't have any strings on his guitar in the video we love that i'm waiting for the guy to mention the fact that i forgot to talk about that Big John Hart is in the clip of this actual episode. That's right. Around the 10 minute mark, 10 minute and 11 seconds, I think you can see him in the background. Like, I love shit like that. Tell yep. us, talk. That's why we put the feedback out there in the beginning, because it's a way to keep the episode that we just did. And it's a homage to it, that the conversation continues, that we talk a little bit about it. And it's kiss conversation, stuff that you can't have with your friend because, you know, he's fucking miles away or, uh, like you don't have a buddy that likes kiss nearby, but we're part of your kiss family mm -hmm. and we're discussing this stuff. And if you want us to discuss something else, bring it up. All the people on our like group page and our regular Facebook page and Twitter stuff. We don't deal with the, the toxic shit. We can make fun of like the band <laughs> and some of the shit they do and everything. But you know, we, we're not there to bust on each other. We're there to support each other. So if you want to be part of this fun fucking kiss family, join, you know, Absolutely. and get involved and communicate and talk. You'll you'll find that uh, you, you'll you're, you're going to be welcomed into a good group of people. And uh, we like it that way. And we hope it'll stay that way. Mm -hmm. But uh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 And I always repeat the email is a great way to communicate with us. And that's shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. Shout it out loudcast at gmail.com. And I, I also wanted to mention, I think Ed's got some new designs coming out. And mm -hmm. he'll have some new stuff for us coming down the line. You'll see. We're going to have some, uh, perhaps some catchphrases now getting uh, produced by Ed on the shout it out loudcast section of Click T Shop. Is that oh. what he does? Do you like Kiss? Oh, well, maybe some of the Ace Cult members do. So we'll find right. out. That's right. So, Tom, let's end this episode with some famous last words. What do you got? Through a dream, I have come to an ancient door. Lost in the mist. I have been there a hundred times or more. Pounding my fists. Pounding is meat. Ow. <laughs> um, they said I didn't stand a chance. I wouldn't win. No way. But I got news for you. There's nothing that I can't do. Because I believe in me. Yes, I believe in me. Son of a bitch, I believe in me. I don't need nobody. I don't need no money. I don't, I don't need don't. to get wasted. It only holds me down. <laughs> Tonight, Paul Stanley can't join us to sing a duet of I. We've got this Austrian fellow bodybuilder to join us on this episode of Fridays. Why don't you join us, Mr. Swadzenega. It's Swadzenega. <laughs> I don't need to get wasted. I've already told you. It only holds me down. <laughs> Everybody down. Let's get to the chopper. Put that cookie down. 
Fat Jean, put the cookie down. Your hips are too big. Oh, God. Save the best for last. Oh, Arnold doing kiss lyrics. Always a favorite of mine. Yep. Tom, thank you. Loudcasters, thank you. Kiss Army, thank you. Guys, thank you so much. As always, uh, we love you guys. Without you, the show wouldn't be what it is. So thank you, as always. And Zeus, thank you, my friend. Peace out, Girl Scout. 